Hey, my name's Rod, and I want to share with you a little bit about why I love to lead people into the presence of Jesus. You know, I've had the honor of leading worship in a, in a wide variety of styles, from a robed choir and pipe organ to a five-piece rhythm section all in jeans. I've led with a large choir and orchestra or simply a guitar player. And here's what I've discovered. God isn't concerned with our style of worship, but he's very concerned with our offering of worship. Would you stand and let's bless the name of God together. Blessed be your name. Here we go. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, still God, blessed be every blessing, every blessing. So I delight in discovering the heart song of a particular congregation, those sounds and lyrics that connect their hearts with the heart of God, and then crafting worship services that release their hearts and minds so together we worship in spirit and truth. Most of you know him as the guy that plays the organ. I get to know him as a human being. He's a better human being than he is an organist. I'm grateful for him. <laughs> and all that he does, and all of our team. It's amazing. I, I want to welcome you here today. It's going to be a great day because God is in the house. Jesus encountered a woman one time at a well. Many of you will know that story. And, and she was struggling to know where to find a source of life. She was searching all kinds of places that kept being dry and weary land. And Jesus said to this woman, anyone who drinks the water from the well that you're about to drink from, will soon become thirsty again. And then there's a holy but. But those who drink the water. In other words, I don't see the worship pastor role as one that determines the worship style of a faith community as much as I do one that it discovers or unearths the heartbeat of a local church and then gives her the best ways, the best tools, the best songs to express it. <laughs> to that, however, if the heart song of the congregation doesn't include a broken heart for the community that, that she's trying to reach, I'd want to foster that too. It seems to me that worship music should primarily reflect the heart of a congregation, but must also be able to connect with the heart of a community that congregation is trying to reach. This requires thoughtfulness, it requires prayer. And it can change everything. So as a worship leader, one of, one of my passions is passion. I, I get enthusiastic about enthusiasm. I'm a sports fan, and, and, and yet it grieves me when we're more excited about a football game or a basketball game than we are about our Savior. Maybe that's why people tell me that enthusiasm is a key element of, of my effectiveness as a worship leader. Ground. His body led 
light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave. You may already know this, but the word enthusiasm comes from theos, God, being in us. So that's why I think it makes sense for us to stir up an awareness of Christ in us as we remember, as we celebrate, as we sit at the feet of Jesus. And I love doing that. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 